This is the slightly crazy story of a car maker that for 30 years rivaled Rolls Royce, challenged Cadillac, and got the better of Bugatti in luxury, speed, and motor racing. It is considered the very first modern sports car, a car with high performances but able to be used on road as well. We're talking about Hispano Suiza, a name that dripped glamour, exuded sporting success, attracted the rich and powerful, and gave armed forces around the world quite the boost. The Allies won the First World War in the air thanks to the Hispano Suiza engine. Believe it or not, Hispano Suiza actually spent more time making guns and aerotech than cars for 80 years. Then in 2019, the Catalan descendants of the company founder returned with a striking new electric car. The Carmen. It's super fast, it's super expensive. And that's not all. Hispano Suiza is also back in motor racing through the Extreme E Rally series, where women and men are equal drivers. They've released an even sportier version of the Carmen called the Boulogne in honor of their racing heritage. More on that later. The exclusive EV hypercar quickly turned the head of US car collector Michael Fuchs. You know, these guys are pioneers. I mean, the car, it's an old brand, but the car is a new version of an old brand. But what does that really mean? Why was Hispano Suiza so influential? What made its car making fade into obscurity? And can it go full circle and become a top-notch electric car maker in the 21st century? Strap yourselves in for the Hispano Suiza story. It's quite a trip. I was taken to where it all happened. I went to the castle. I went to the factory. I went to all the places. And I loved what I saw because it had a, a feel of old beauty with a very modern version of a car. And I knew the brand because anybody my age that loves cars would know the Hispano Suiza brand. The origin of the new Hispano Suiza project, besides it being our family dream, was our mother Carmen, who was the granddaughter of the founder, Damian Mateu. Every time we spoke about Hispano Suiza, she would say, I dream of seeing Hispano Suiza cars on the roads of the world again. So to honor her, we chose the name Carmen for this project which is so exciting for this entire family. But Project Carmen was going nowhere without someone who actually knew how to make cars. Enter Jean Arus and his company QEV Technologies. They have a strong pedigree in motor racing and especially the all-electric Formula E series. We have really won the first season of Formula E and later we worked for Mahinda during five years where we had more than seven victories and more than 20 podiums. This transfer of knowledge from dynamics and energy management from Formula E is what we have done for Hispano Suiza project. Now let's jump back to 1904 in Barcelona for some intriguing parallels. The original Hispano Suiza was founded by a Spanish businessman, Damian Mateu, along with a Swiss engineer, Mark Bierkigt, it was a match made in motoring heaven. Birgit was a gifted engineer whose engines gave Hispano Suiza cars a reputation for speed and technical excellence. Mateo had the financial and social pulling power to establish such an exclusive brand. Being endorsed by the biggest influencer of the time added even more prestige to their trailblazing success. The Spanish king Alfonso XIII, that was an automotive enthusiast, he invited the Spanish Suiza to participate in different races in Spain and abroad. In 1910, the first international race won by the Spanish Suiza was the Circuit de Boulogne in France. The Circuit de Boulogne in France was won by an Alfonso XIII type vehicle driven by Paolo Zuccarelli. The king was so happy with the results of the Spanish Suiza cars that he ordered for himself a racing car adapted to the road use. This is the copy of the invoice where the Hispano Suiza sells the vehicle to the king. Really, this invoice can be considered like the birth certificate of the modern concept of a sports car. Hispano Suiza engines also worked really well with aeroplanes, and when World War I broke out, Beerkick developed a revolutionary V8 motor in a cast aluminium block. 
The HS-8 was powerful and lightweight, and the wartime allies bought it in huge numbers. Really, this engine was something totally new in the industry and in the war, and this engine was built in more than 50,000 units during the First World War. It was built in Spain, in France, in Italy, in England, and in the States. It was said in the time that the Allies won the First World War in the air thanks to the hispano suiza engine that was fitted to practically all the fighters of France and England. This key role earned hispano suiza a new emblem, the Flying Stork. It adorned the squadron of Georges Guinemer, France's most famous flying ace, who died in action aged 22. The company that powered his aeroplanes through countless air battles then adopted the symbol in his honour. After the war, Hispano Suiza turned its attention back to cars and racing, with its new factory based in Paris. The important thing was how to attack the new a luxury car market with the technology of the aero engine, Hispano Suiza, Birki in Paris in that case, developed the H6 car. That was a car with an engine derived from the aero engine technology, but with some improvement never seen before, like the servo brakes. The brakes in that moment for the big cars were very heavy, and Birki was the first to design a servo assistance for that. As you might imagine, having proper brakes caught on fast and other car makers such as Rolls-Royce would license Hispano Suiza's tech for decades. Their advanced H6 cars also racked up a string of racing successes, above all on the Bologna circuit. In all, the 1920s were a golden age for Hispano Suiza as it became one of the most sought-after brands of the era. The H6 model and later on the V12 were the reference cars used by kings, by actors, and really if you go far away in India, in Japan, in Romania, etc., in all the royal houses, or presidential, or even the emperor house, you can find several Hispano Suiza. But it couldn't last. In 1936, the Spanish Civil War broke out and everything changed. La Hispano owners from Barcelona, the Mateu family, were from the very beginning on the side of Franco, in the nationalist side. But the problem was that the factory of Barcelona remained in the Republican side. Then the real owners of the company had no control anymore on the production or activities. That was a big problem because they could not work for the Franco side from the Barcelona, but they erected a new factory in Sevilla. That was La Hispano Suiza de Sevilla. The most important production was the Fiat aircraft fighter CR32 for the nationalist side. The nationalists won. Franco established a military dictatorship. The Barcelona factory had to make buses and the company eventually went under state control. After 1938, no more cars were produced under the Hispano Suiza name. As for their star engineer, Birkicht went home to Switzerland and set up a branch of the company making weapons. The next year, World War II broke out and Hispano Suiza's automatic cannon were fitted to many Allied warplanes. In 1943, US bombers protected by Birkicht's guns destroyed his Hispano Suiza car making factory in Paris to stop it being used by the Nazi occupiers. Isn't war a strange business? On to the 1950s and 60s now, where Hispano Suiza became firmly established as an arms maker. The Swiss branch even sold Germany's fledgling armed forces a tank, the HS-30. It proved a bit of a dud, and anyway, the deal was overshadowed by corruption allegations that were never really completely resolved it was not a good look. In the late 60s, things picked up for Hispano Suiza when it and Bugatti were taken under the wings of a French aerospace consortium. Its name then showed up on such precision equipment as the 4 meter high landing gear on Concorde and, surprise surprise, its braking systems. And there was yet another twist. The Flying Stork emblem returned to the French Air Force with Hispano Suiza providing tech for the military's Mirage fighter jets. 
In the 2000s, there were a couple of independent efforts to put the Hispano Suiza name back on cars, but they ran out of steam. Which brings us back to the Carmen relaunch. I did warn you it was going to be a bit of a trip. So where do we go from here? Basically, we find to make something very, very special in relationship also with these values of the brand because the Hispano Suiza on the 20s of the last century was a very exclusive car on the same level than the Rolls Royce and the more luxury brands on the wall. And then we need to make something very special, very emotional for the customer. Yeah, but we have tried to, um, to recover an historic brand that exists 100 years ago. It was a luxury brand that was really famous at that moment but was also a successful brand in terms of races in motorsport. What we have tried to do is a combination between the performance of the vehicle and the luxury and exclusivity that really Hispano Suiza have defined uh, and will defend forever. No? The most important point is the design, the styling, the shapes of the car, very romantic shapes, making reference to the Art Deco and the 20s of the last century, but also is this mix between the past, the present, and the most evolved electric technology applied on a car with a very high performance. We sneak to peek inside the Hispano Suiza workshop outside Barcelona to see how the Carmens are being built. For the rear part of the car, for the rear view, we designed these special rings as a, as a tail light, where we put the emblem of our brand, the Stork. We also make these shapes on the rear fenders as a water drops, uh, because it's a very aerodynamic shape and also it's a remember of the original Xenia Dubonet. And then we use on the interior the traditional materials that we use on the past in our cars, as leather, aluminium, wood, and all these materials that are the legacy of our brand. On Carmen, we offer the possibility to our customers to put the rear wheel cover. Then we have the possibility to put and remove if you want to use on a track day or if you want to use running on a street. This is an aspect that we want to remember the original rear fender of the original Xenia Dubonet. The intention is to produce a small series production of 20 vehicles, one for the family and 19 will be for sale. And then uh, the Boulogne, that is the sportive version, uh, they pretend to maybe sell five cars. We really want to respect the exclusivity on this production. I think that the Carmen respect more the luxury and other things that are interiors you can feel as exclusivity, but the Boulogne pretend to have like the sporting version and to and have an extra power also respect to the Carmen. We put this name, the Carmen Boulogne, making reference to, to the Coupe Boulogne, celebrated on the, on the 20 years. Like the HS6 of the 1920s, this Hispano Suiza is at the top end of contemporary car tech. 1,100 horsepower can push it to a top speed of 290 kilometers an hour. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour acceleration is put at 2.6 seconds. We went for a ride in the Carmen Boulogne to see what you get for a starting price of 1.6 million euros. You feel the power, you feel the speed, and the reaction of the steering wheel is very fast as well. This car is all made in the chassis in carbon fiber. For an electric car, 1,700 kilos is a light car. That's why when you drive in a road, turning is almost very adapted, no? very flat. It's driving flat all around the corner. This car is developed from the Formula E technology. We always say that this car is coming from the race tracks to the road. It's completely reversed from normal cars that are developed from the road to the circuit. This is the number one of five, the first edition of the five Boulogne that are going to be built. For sure you are going to be is exclusive with this kind of cars no? because we are going to build just five uh, Boulogne's and with 19 garments, I don't think it's going to be easy to meet another client 
on the road. That exclusivity includes buyers being able to customize their new Hispano Suiza almost completely. For collector Michael Fuchs, this was a big selling point. They're willing to go way out of the way and create a car together with the customer, which I think is a very good idea. Because when somebody's going to buy a car like that and spend that kind of money, they want to be part of the building. They want to be part of the customization. The most special characteristics of the Mr. Fuchs car, for sure, is the finish on the body, because we must to develop a special solution for him, based on the carbon fiber look and clear coated with the purple color that he defines uh, with us. It's unique because we offer uh, more than 1,000 possibilities to to customize. I had made another car. I made a Rolls Royce in that color. And the Rolls Royce is outstanding. I mean, people went crazy when they saw it. So I thought if I do it with the Hispano Suiza, except I make a different change. I put copper in it instead of chrome. And when you see it, I mean, that's a wild car. Anybody that sees that car is going to be blown out of their minds. What's also slightly mind-blowing is the return of Hispano Suiza to motor racing in the form of the all-electric Extreme E Rally Series. This is pitched as a progressive format to draw attention to the effects of climate change around the world. That's quite a journey from pushing guns, planes and tanks. The new Hispano Suiza, right? 100 years later, the Hispano Suiza project is reborn, and it's upholding the same values that my great grandfather had back then. I mean, technologically advanced cars with spectacular reliability, sports cars. And that's why we've created a luxury hypercar with the same DNA that my grandfather had more than 100 years ago. Today, you have a very wide offer of excellent cars with good performances, good line. But when you really want something special, you are not buying just a machine. You want to be part of a brand, to be part of a name, to share a name, and to enter to some extent in a legend. And Hispano Suiza is, of course, a legend. So as Hispano Suiza comes full circle as a pioneering car maker, you have to wonder, will it be just as famous in another hundred years? If one thing is for sure, the fate of this legendary company is anything but predictable. If you enjoyed this slightly crazy story, let us know in the comments what you think about Hispano Suiza.